On April 27, 2022, Channel 3000 reported on the taking of the life of a 20-month-old toddler in Madison, Wisconsin. The precious child's name is Rayla Nicole Montgomery, and the disgusting pervert behind her untimely demise is Marshawn Giles. Here's the story. A man accused in the death of a Madison toddler appears in court for the first time. He's charged with more than a dozen crimes. Tony Galley is live with the latest from the court appearance and a warning. Some of these details may be disturbing. Tony. Marshawn Giles remains jailed tonight as prosecutors say he had occasions of domestic violence even before he sexually assaulted and killed a 20-month-old girl. Now, authorities say between mid and late April, Giles punched a preteen boy. He punched his girlfriend and he displayed a gun. And less than 72 hours before the child's death, prosecutors say that the girlfriend was too scared to go to police and disclose Giles' name after Giles pointed a gun at her during a drive. Now, authorities say on Monday, April 25th, Giles flew into a rage, sexually assaulted the child, and threw the little girl into a fixture in a bathroom. Now, the medical examiner says injuries to the child's head and other injuries caused her homicidal death. And we are still looking into the response by Dane County Child Protection Services during those days leading up to this fatal event. And we'll have more on that coming up during 27 News tonight at 6. Reporting live from the Dane County Public Safety Building, Tony Galley, 27 News. Arguably, there isn't an amount um, because the facts are so grievous and serious with the prior record to expect that somebody's going to voluntarily appear in court. Strong words from a Dane County Court Commissioner just moments ago, choosing to hold Marshawn Giles on a million dollar cash bond. Giles accused of killing a young girl in Madison late last month and earlier this afternoon, prosecutors charged him with 18 counts, including murder and child sexual assault. In court records, he's accused of phys physically and sexually assaulting both the toddler and her mother and throwing the child several times on the night she died. We already knew Child Protective Services was involved, but Naomi Cole reveals how much more contact there was than we previously knew. Naomi? Court records say that children told police that Giles threatened them with guns, physically abused them. Now, Giles had assaulted their mom and given her a gun, telling her to kill herself. All of this in just the days leading up to the toddler's death. But when police trying to get CPS to formally remove the children from the home where the mom and boyfriend lived, CPS said it still wasn't enough to prove the children were in imminent danger. According to the court records, the only reason that the toddler's two older siblings were not at home at the, uh, the night the girl died it was because they themselves refused to go home with their mom that night when she picked up the toddler. They told police and their grandparents several times they didn't feel safe at home. This wasn't the first time the CPS got involved with Giles. I reported on his lengthy criminal history in Rock County in 2019. The string of incidents that landed him behind bars until last year. Now, we're also learning CPS was involved in that county for two other children, but ultimately they closed the case because they couldn't find a 
gun that the victim said they were being threatened with. Court records also say Giles had been dating the toddler's mother for a few months, starting in January. The mom said it started fine, and it was only in the few weeks before the girl's death that he started becoming abusive and controlling. The toddler's death in Madison late last month should not have happened. Tonight, the agency that protects children from such situations says it has been mischaracterized in court reports. In a statement to us late this afternoon, Dane County's Human Services Director told us CPS feels Madison Police's description of what happened before that child's death was incomplete and, quote, does not conform to how we operate as a matter of practice. And that, it, and with that as tonight's backdrop, investigative reporter Naomi Coles tells us what we know about this case and puts it into context with other deaths from abuse or neglect. Naomi? Yesterday, I showed you how Madison police tried to get CPS to set a removal order for the children, but they said in court records, caseworkers believed there wasn't enough evidence of imminent danger. Tonight, or today, the standout thing to know is that when a child dies from abuse or neglect in Wisconsin, it is more likely than not that CPS has been involved in the past. That's according to a review of 2020 child deaths that were substantiated as abuse or neglect. In more than half of them, or 17 out of 27 deaths, caseworkers had passed contact with the family often in the a form of unsubstantiated abuse or neglect investigations. Time after time, in a review of case records, there was contact with CPS in the five years before the death, many times just days or weeks before. It's both in the form of screened out reports, which mean the initial call to CPS wouldn't qualify as maltreatment if it were true, but it's also very commonly in the form of past calls where a report was assessed, but there wasn't enough evidence to substantiate abuse. Other times, caseworkers were still evaluating a report when the child died. On February 9th, it's what prompted state lawmakers from both parties in a recent public hearing to question the effectiveness of existing policies. You know, we're not going to be able to save every single child, but that shouldn't stop us from trying and when you see those egregious reports where there's so many contacts with child protective services so many screened out so many unsubstantiated and then the child dies I do think that we need to get a little bit more of an answer from Department of Children and Families on on if we need to help them and their ability to scrutinize a little deeper because uh, any child that is that dies from violence uh, is unnecessary. Except for Milwaukee, Wisconsin's CPS system is county-run with oversight from the state. So taking a child out of a home is an extreme measure in and of itself. Wendy Henderson from the state Department of Children and Families said their approach to removing children from home has evolved in keeping with national best practices. That means minimizing the trauma of removing a child from their home in all but the worst situations. Plus, she believes that looking backwards after a child's death at how policies may or may not have been followed isn't an effective approach. When you look backwards at any any sort of complicated set of rules and systems, the violations of those or the lack of doing a certain thing sometimes isn't as connected to the incident that happened. How do we support workers through these cases, which are tragedies in and of themselves? Uh, how do we stop looking at this as a blaming system? I want to be clear on one thing, neither the state official you just heard or the lawmakers in that story are specifically commenting on this toddler's death in Madison, but they're rather speaking to general issues. Now for more on this, later tonight, head to channel3000.com for more details from a special report that airs Sunday on how CPS investigates child abuse. These are just 15 of the 18 charges 23-year-old Giles is facing. Now let's end this by reading the toddler's obituary. Rayla Nicole Montgomery, born August 11th, 2020, transitioned on April 25th, 2022, at just 20 months old. Our precious angel, Rayla Nicole Montgomery, beloved daughter of Raina Montgomery, went to be with our Lord on Monday, April 25th, 2022. Rayla was born August 11th, 2020 in Madison, Wisconsin. Rayla brought so much joy and happiness to everyone she touched. Rayla's two brothers absolutely adored her and she adored them more than anything. With the short time Rayla was on this earth, she taught us to love harder, smile more, and find tranquility in the simple blessings. Her curiosity guided her every step. She was adventurous, motivated, and one tough cookie. Rayla had a calmness, yet expressional personality 
that made everyone's heart whole. Rayla found the most joy being with her mama, Raina Montgomery, two older brothers, Cayenne and Hosiah, Nana, Kadida Piazza, Grandpa, Matthew Montgomery, Great Grandma, Gigi Donna Piazza, Papa, John Matthews. The kind of love Rayla gave was gentle, kind, and everlasting. She is a gift from God and always will be. We have to look at what will always remain from the beautiful impact Rayla gave to this world. And that's a pure and gentle heart that will always bring much more than a smile to our faces. It will be a rooted feeling of thankfulness that we had the blessing to love her and be loved by her. for coming to my sister's funeral and I just want to let you know I love you guys and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Thank you guys. In loving memory of Rayla Nicole Montgomery. Rest in peace, baby girl.